Hello, and welcome to the Z Hut. Today, we're going to take a look at the LaVolta DC power supply model number BPS 305. Now, this is a 0 to 30 volt variable power supply that you can control both the voltage between 0 and 30 volts and you can control the current from 0 to 5 amps. And uh, actually, by using the fine adjustment, it'll go just a little bit above 5 amps, and uh, the voltage fine adjustment, it'll go just a little bit over 30 volts. But uh, in the specifications, it just says um, 0 to 30 volts and uh, 0 to 5 amps. Now, there are lots of different places in China that makes these, and this comes from China. And if you're looking at one that's the, the, the 5 amp, 0 to 30 volt, it's going to probably pretty much be the same thing on the inside. They're just going to have the cosmetic front plate look a little different. Otherwise, they're just clones. They, they all make them. They're pretty much identical. I noticed there's two models of these, though. There's one that has this uh, high and low amp button, and that's just so you can fine-tune the, the amperage, the current, a little more. So you can fine-tune in high, or you can fine-tune low. So it's, uh, if I remember right, it only goes up to like 2 amps, somewhere in there on the low, and in the high it goes to the 5. All right, so what uh, we're going to do here is I got a couple items. I got a motor, and I got a car light bulb. And we're going to try them out on here and take a look at uh, how you use one of these. Um, otherwise, there ain't really a whole lot to go over on the features of it. Um, there is adjustments here if your current or your voltage isn't reading quite right. And I did test this with a multimeter when I got it in the mail. And it was pretty much right on. It was off like 0 0.01 on the voltage, so I didn't even bother messing with adjusting that. That's close enough for what I'm using this for. Um, nice feature, it does have a cooling fan that's in the back built into it, so it helps keep it cool. Now these are cheap. Um, you're talking, depending which place you get it from and if it has the high and low button, you're going to be talking around $50 to $70. This one was about mid-range of there. It was like around I think it was $66, somewhere in there. And uh, I got this off Amazon, so if you're looking for one, you can check it out there. Otherwise, um, if you go to my website, I'll have some links to another place that you can get these pretty cheap that has a bunch of different models of them. Uh, that's Deals Extreme. I buy a lot of stuff through them. I would have normally bought this from them, but I got an Amazon gift card for switching internet providers. So I used the money from that to uh, buy some upgrades for my equipment for doing the YouTube videos here. So I got the power supply and some camera equipment and stuff. And that's why we've been doing reviews here. If you're watching this, don't and you're a subscriber, don't worry. We will be getting back to doing electronics tutorials and I'll probably be starting them up again in a day or two. I just had all this stuff that I ordered from Amazon and figured I might as well go through it and do some reviews on it because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there on YouTube that would uh, like to see these in use before they bought one. So what we'll do first is we'll power her up and I got it set on the high amps and we'll do the light bulb first and I'll just show you um, the basics on how to use one of these. Because, I mean, most power supplies are fixed, and this is variable. This is really handy for electronics work, where you can control the amperage and the voltage. And the nice thing is, too, it'll let you check how much amperage it's drawn. So you don't have to use a multimeter. Uh, this only goes down to a decimal point of 2. So if you want real fine, real fine reading, you still would have to use a multimeter. But for most of what I'm going to be using this for, this is going to work fine. Now I got everything set at zero, and every time you power this on to use it, turn everything to zero so you don't accidentally put too much current and voltage and pop something. Because if I put 30 volts in this little 12 volt uh, light bulb, and this is out of a car, 
And I just had it laying around. It was a spare bulb I had. But uh, if you put too much voltage into something, pop, it'll go. So I'll do first is I'll, I'm just going to turn the amperage up a, bit, a little bit, about halfway. Then we'll grab the course adjustment and we'll turn her up. We'll start out, there's 5 volts. And basically this is pulling 1 amp, um, 0.99, so you might as well call it 1 amp at 5 volts. Well, we can turn it up to where it should be. And on your vehicle, it's going to be somewhere between 13 and 14 volts. Depending, it kind of depends on your alternator and your voltage regulator, but it's going to be between 13, 13 and 14 volts. Oh, got a bad connection there, now it's back on. And as you can see, we're drawing 13.5 volts. So I'm right in the middle of that range, and we're drawing 1.65 amps. Just a little over 1.5 amps. There, and you can see kind of how useful one of these supplies is. And I can also cut down how many amps it draws. If I only wanted the thing to be drawn 1 amp, I'll get it set to 1 amp. At 1 amp, well it's actually 1.01, .01, it can only draw 5.6 volts. So um, I'm guessing you can see how useful one of these can be now. You can adjust the current and the voltage. So if you adjust the current, it will only let through the voltage that that current will be drawing, or it will be trying for that current, excuse me. All right, let's try a DC motor I got here. Let's see how hot did that get? Not too hot. Set that down. Now this is a DC motor. This is rated somewhere around 12 volts. But you can probably put 20 volts to it before it start causing problems. But it's again, we're going to turn the current up about halfway. We'll adjust the voltage. Yeah, right around 2 volts it finally started turning. There's 7 volts. And it's drawn 0 0.05 amps, 50 milliamps. And you see if you put a load onto it, I'm just pushing my finger on it to slow it down, the amperage goes up because it's drawing more amps to try to turn it. All right, let's run her up to 12. Well, I guess we'll go 13. Because most of your 12 volt power supplies, they say 12 volts, but they're usually 13 plus. See again, at 13 volts, it's drawn 60 milliamps. And if I put a load on to it, figure if it was turning something, yeah, it'd be drawing about 100 milliamps with a small load, a heavy load. It's going to be drawn about 25 to 30. Now once again, I said this uh, little DC motor, you can actually, it's rated for 12, but you can get about 20 out of it without frying it. It will get a little warm real quick, but the 20 volts probably won't fry it. There we go, 20 volts, and we're still drawing the 6 milliamps. Put a load on it, it's about the same as before. Oh, you put a real hard load on it, it goes up to an amp. All right, turn that back down. Well, that's the uh, LaVolta BPS-305 variable bench power supply. Um, I do recommend getting one of these cheap Chinese ones if you're not using it a ton. Um, I do use this sort of regularly, but uh, because of price, for the $60, if I get three years out of this thing, 
that's way better than spending $400 for one that I might get a year or two more out of. And there are plenty of other applications besides what I just showed you. I mean, you can charge rechargeable batteries off of these. Just set your current and your voltage and throw your batteries on there and they'll charge. Um, if you do a, a search here on YouTube or on Google, there's uh, plenty of people who got tutorials on how to charge batteries off of these. But uh, the main use I got this for is the Arduino projects and stuff. I can start testing and seeing, you know, how much current they draw and play around with the voltages. And then also some of the IC chips I've ordered run at um, different voltages and stuff. So you'll be seeing this in my upcoming electronics videos a lot more often now. Well, I hope you found this information useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it big time, really would. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed already and you're uh, interested in microcontrollers and electronic projects. Um, most of my stuff is geared towards beginners and intermediate. And once in a great while, I'll do something a little more advanced. But I try to keep most of the videos on here towards the beginners and intermediate because if you're advanced electronics you probably aren't going to be watching these videos on YouTube so with that uh, thank you for joining us here at the Z-Hut today have a great day and have fun building